Greetings hobbyists, this is Artans of Vool. In this video we're going to talk through a really important tip when using Checker Deselect. So before we talk about this trick, let's quickly go through what Checker Deselect is. So I'm going to shift an A, bring in a grid, and then we're going to up this to 20 subdivisions. If I go into face mode, we can see here we've got a load of faces laid out like a grid. And if I wanted this to be, for want of a better word, like a chessboard, what I can do is go to select, check a deselect, and at the moment we've got the option, if you don't have this, make sure you click the option at the bottom left hand side. I've got one deselected and one selected, and that carries on and on. We can also change the offset so I can move that along by one or more, but in this instance it will just look like what it was because we've only got one selected and one deselected. So this is checker deselect. It's really useful, it allows you to really cool things, for example, like that. But what I want to talk about here is a problem that we have with this and how we can solve it. Now, on a grid like this, this problem doesn't exist. If I select there and then control select to here, so we've got all of these faces selected, I'm just going to come up here and bring on my statistics so we can see this. We can see that here we've got 20 faces that are selected. And if I go to select, and check a deselect, and then let's change this to two and two, and let's put that offset back down to zero. We can see we've got two selected, two deselected, and so on. So effectively, we've got a total of 10 selected. We can back that up with the faces here, and those are selected in five groups of two. This is some relatively easy maths. It makes sense, it's not a problem. So we can use that very easily. However, if I shift a mesh and then bring in a cylinder, I'm going to down the number of vertices to 20 here, so it's exactly the same, and we would expect the same thing to happen. So if I just come in here and go into face mode and select just this outer edge here, we can see once again we've got 20 faces selected. But now, if we go to select and check a deselect and two and two, we can see while this looks like it's working here, there we've only got one selected, and here, we've got three deselected. Now this doesn't work. We had 20 faces in this loop. So, okay, I could offset this by one and no, that's not gonna work. Now we've gone to one deselected here and three selected on the other side. This should work, just like before. This adds up to a total of four, two selected and two deselected and 20 is divisible by four. We've got our 20 faces. So why isn't this working? Right, to make this really clear, what I'm going to do is just press I to inset here and then G and Z this up a little bit so we can see this both from the top and from the side. It makes it a little bit easier to view. I'm also just going to A and then R and Z to rotate this round so I've got one of these faces perfectly on this axis. So if I look from above, we've got the Y axis is this green line here. Let's just annotate that, so we've got this line here, that was awfully not straight. But we've got this and it's important to what I'm going to discuss. So what we're going to do is Alt Select here again, notice that the one that is actually in blue, which I've got my setup to be this colour and to use these colours for, blue is the one that is currently active and all the green ones are selected. There's a link in the description to a video where I set up my object to have this cool shading and then to have this option of how to view everything, I think it's really useful to see. And I think it makes Blender a bit clearer. But if I go to select and check a deselect, we can see what the problem is here. Instead of it selecting like the grid, where it just works out two and then two and then two, what Blender does is it uses this point as the starting point, but it tries to make everything mirrored. It's basically gonna try and look at the check a deselect in this direction, and in this direction, clockwise and anti-clockwise, until it meets just here. So at the moment, I've got one, two, deselected, two selected, two deselected, and then so on. And then going the other way, it uses this one as one again, and then two, and then one, two, one, two, and so on. So this is not gonna work. Effectively, Blender is trying to make this look symmetrical. And that means that we can't ever select everything two on and two off. It makes the maths not work. Except for we can fix this. Now this is a great trick. It was shared by Tuba75. It might be Shuba75. I'm not sure if it's a ch or a sh. Depending on what language it is, that could be different. Either way, a really great tip. And that is that if I press Alt and select, if I press Shift and deselect the one where I want this to start, and then reselect one of the other points, 
And it's really important that we do this, just so I can show this. If you don't do this, and just leave it like that, so nothing is active, we've only got these ones that are green to show they're selected. If I go to select and check deselect, it will say that there's no active vertex edge or face. So we need to shift select and then shift reselect so that one of them is active. I can go to select, check a deselect. And we can see here, we've still got what looks like the same problem. We've got three deselected, but interestingly over the other side, we don't have the one deselected. We've got that all the way down by the face that wasn't selected at all. So what I can now do is just click one on my offset and now we've got this exactly selected as we would expect. Starting from this point, two deselected, two selected, and so on. Solving this problem, because Blender is no longer trying to mirror or almost symmetrize the select and check a deselect around a loop. So a really nice tip there. This is something that's been eluding me for quite a while and I found it quite annoying. And this actually was shown in the video where I was trying to create some gears and I said that it's almost impossible to make gears without doing quite a long-winded process. But actually, if we do that now, I can Alt and E and extrude faces along normals to move this out and I could start creating some form of gear system. So a really nice tip. Once again, thank you Tuber75. It's always wonderful when people share things for the community. And if you have any other great tips for Blender that you want to share, please do feel free to say in the comments section. And if they're really handy or they haven't been covered in a video before, I'll definitely be adding them to things to cover in the channel. Have a great day, guys.